are barefoot shoes right for you? Let's break it down. Let's talk about some key features that go into them, best things to use them for, and some considerations um, just to have a good experience using barefoot shoes. Hi, I'm Dr. Zach Ratliff of True Motion Therapy in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm a sports chiropractor and we specialize in the conservative management of musculoskeletal pain and injuries, meaning treatments without the involvement of drugs or surgical intervention. Number one, let's chat through some construction that goes into these barefoot shoes. So what you're gonna see is a very light shoe. It's gonna have a very thin outsole, which makes it very flexible and it will twist and fold. Really, it is meant to mimic you walking barefoot. Um, now in comparison, a more traditional running shoe with standard cushioning still has some flexibility, but not nearly as much as the barefoot shoe. Um, but also we have much more cushioning where we're talking millimeters of um, outsole on these barefoot shoes. So definitely some big differences between the shoes. So let's keep moving. Number two, what's the purpose of using a barefoot shoe? And to better explain that, let's walk that back to the importance of the foot in relation to the rest of the body. Your foot is your only interaction with your environment in most cases. And by that I mean, when you were walking around, your foot is taking in information about the environment and it's giving information up the chain through your joints and muscles, as well as giving a ton of input up to your brain about how your body is operating in time and space. Now the barefoot shoe is going to give the max amount of input uh, through that shoe and so that your foot gets everything to know about your environment without being filtered through any cushioning or stability support. So that brings in another key aspect of this that in a barefoot shoe, your foot becomes the primary stabilizing aspect um, for the arch of your foot and how that moves up the chain in your body um, to where sometimes in a more traditional running shoe, um, there are support aids um, as well as the cushioning for protection. Now, this is a little bit of a double-edged sword because we want our foot to play an active role in the stability of our foot, um, but the barefoot shoe is going to expose any instabilities in our foot, so it can strengthen that over time, but um, a more traditional shoe is going to give you that support. Um, but it is important that your foot also has an active role to play, um, complementing what the shoe is also providing. Now, some other key considerations uh, to think through when utilizing barefoot shoes is that if we think historically in Western civilizations, most all of us have grown up from baby toddler era wearing shoes. To some degree, our body, our feet have become dependent on the protection that a more traditional shoe provides through cushion and uh, the outer sole. Now, that's not to say that a barefoot shoe can't be integrated into your routine, um, but you are gonna have to make that a very gradual process um, so that your body has time to acclimate. So sometimes if we try to integrate in too much activity in a barefoot shoe too soon, it can amplify tendon injuries, bone stress injuries, um, and just soreness, achiness, because um, it's gonna make your body do a lot more of the work. So it's important to think through the activities that we're utilizing these shoes for. So in terms of when people are getting first introduced to these barefoot shoes, it's important to think of light level activities such as walking or maybe doing some of your more low intensity strength training in them. And that's gonna allow your body to slowly acclimate. Um, and that's because when we are walking, doing light activity like that, think we're putting about one to two times body weight through our muscles, tendons, joints, all of that. When we consider an activity like running or sprinting, um, that's starting, that's gonna amplify that um, force that's getting put through our joint 
uh, exponentially. So it actually gets up to about six to eight times your body weight going through your joints and ligaments and tendons. So when we think about integrating in a barefoot shoe, that needs to be a very gradual process. And in some cases, it might not be realistic if you're a long distance runner to be running in barefoot shoes. You might be better served to walk and do some strength training in your barefoot shoes to utilize the benefits of strengthening your foot. But then for some of your longer runs, you might be utilizing a more traditional shoe um, that's more suited for that sport. I hope you found that information about barefoot shoes helpful. If you'd like to learn more, I would invite you to check out our website at truemotiontherapy.com where we have more information as well as the ability to schedule an appointment with one of our providers. Um, and if integrating barefoot shoes into your routine is something that you'd like to set as a goal, uh, we would love to walk you through some of the nuances of that um, and just help you avoid some of the pitfalls or uh, injuries that can happen without um, proper integration into a barefoot shoe.